Hey everyone, Docwell here, and welcome to another one of my Dota 2 Hero Guides. Today we're going to be taking a look at Medusa. So Medusa is a very unique hero in general, in that she doesn't have any base strength, and she doesn't gain any strength per level, which is very unique because no other hero has that in the entire game. But the way that she is tanky is that she uses her mana pool to soak damage. So really the only way for her to die is for her to basically lose all of her mana and then she will lose what little health she has afterwards. So the main focus of the hero is going to be getting a big mana pool and then getting right click items to do a lot of right click damage. Because she is a carry that pretty much only plays carry. And she's also a very, very fast farming carry. One of the fastest farmers in the game. Kind of like Luna, Sven, maybe alchemist some of these other heroes and so she really likes transitioning into the jungle doing stacks all that kind of stuff she doesn't really buy any farming item necessarily maybe a manta style would be even her first item and then she can use that to farm waves and stuff independently of her hero but for the most part she's just farming these big items and then hitting this two three four item timing and just being really really hard to bring down because of the way that she is so tanky now you do need to keep in mind that she's kind of this slow hero that just likes to stand there and hit people so you do need your teammates to kind of play around you you want to front line you want to push towers you want to push objectives play around those objectives and have your teammates not kind of run off into places in the jungle or wherever when you're fighting where you can't get to where that's very different than maybe a hero like slark or ursa or some of these other melee carries that are very mobile can just run around the fight she's not that at all completely the opposite so you do need to be careful that you're not taking weird drawn out fights that make you have to run around because then you're not going to be able to dish out the damage you want to do by just sitting there and just right clicking people down and if you're going to be able to do that and cast alt and play defensively and have your team play around you you're going to be very very hard to bring down and dealing a lot of damage and probably winning the game. But before we can understand how to play Medusa, we have to look at her abilities. Now Medusa's facets are Engorged, which plays around her Mystic Snake, which is one of her abilities that gives her mana and does some damage. And this basically just increases her attack damage when she gets mana back from that snake. And so we'll see how that works in a bit, but this is one of those things where Mystic Snake can be an ability that you build around depending if you're maybe playing like a mid Medusa or something like that, because her shard and her eggs really incorporate Mystic Snake, and we'll see that in a bit. But for the most part, the carry version of Medusa, the right-click damage version of Medusa, is going to use this Venomous Volley facet, because this just basically makes her right-clicks better overall, it makes her able to man up, be a better carry hero when she gets a lot of attack speed, which is what she usually does later into the game when she gets a bunch of items. So every five attacks, she just reducing movement speed, attack speed, and cast speed for the enemy, which is just a passive thing that's very good. You don't really have to think about it. it just makes her a better hero overall. And then Mana Shield is the innate passive ability that basically allows her to be tanky. So you can see, you can read that there, just kind of decreases her damage, makes it absorb into the mana, and then you can see here her strength is 0 plus 0, 0. So that's really how the fundamental aspect of the hero works, like I talked about with this passive and with her strength. So that's Medusa's facet and passive ability. Now let's jump in and take a look at all of these normal abilities. Now we can look at Medusa's abilities, and the first ability is Split Shot. This is a pretty straightforward ability. It's what allows her to farm creeps extremely quickly, and it's what allows her to do more damage in fights as well. So basically right now I don't have it selected, I don't have it turned on, so I'm just hitting one enemy when I right-click them, but then if I turn it on, which you just press Q and then it turns it on, now I'm hitting multiple enemies in my attack range. Now the only downside to that is that I'm doing slightly reduced damage when I do turn this on. So sometimes if you're in a fight and you're only attacking one enemy, or you're farming and you're attacking let's say, the last ancient creep in the ancient camp, then sometimes you want to turn this off to just to do more damage a little bit for that brief period of time. But for the most part, you're going to leave this on. And the other thing to know about Split Shot is that it doesn't use modifiers in any of the like split shots. It's only the main target you're targeting. So let's say I have Scotty here and I'm attacking this one guy. He's only getting Scotty. This guy's not getting the Scotty modifier. That's just kind of how it works. Default right now, there is a talent that upgrades this at 25 to have like Scotty apply to everyone or a crit apply to everyone. And that's a really good, you know, timing for this hero. But just keep in mind, they could change that at any moment. So that's Split Shot. Then there's Mystic Snake, so we'll refresh these guys here. And this is pretty straightforward. You just click this ability on an enemy, hero or creep, and then the snake comes out, bounces to multiple heroes, multiple creeps, and then returns to you and gives you mana. So right now, let's just go over to this axe. Let's have him hit me a little bit. 
you know, reduce my mana because I'm pretty tanky. You can see he doesn't have any items. He has a rapier. Look how little damage it's doing. It's kind of insane. This hero is extremely tanky. But anyway, you see how much mana I have. I will send the snake out. It'll hit both of these axes and then give me mana. So this is a great way to restore your mana, restore your tankiness in the lane while you're farming, in team fights, all that kind of stuff. The other thing to keep in mind is that it only jumps to a few heroes. It also only takes mana from heroes that have mana or creeps that have mana. So like in the lane, range creeps have mana, but the other melee ones don't. So you actually won't get mana back if the hero or the enemy that you are using the snake on doesn't have mana. So just keep that in mind. Then we have Gorgon's Grasp. This is a newer ability, actually, with the hero, because the hero used to have Mana Shield as a main ability, and now it's the passive ability when they reworked the hero um, about a year or so ago. So now you have this ability that you can kind of lay down. It's her ability that sort of roots people and gives you some a way to keep people in place so you can actually hit them, which is something that this hero never really had for the most part. So that's honestly all it does, is it kind of lays out these uh, traps. And... They can run away, but then if it lands on top of them, you can see that they are rooted for a short period of time. But they can run into it. It's only when it like lands on top of it, like a net or something, you can think. It's kind of like laying down and falling on them, and then it roots them there. So usually you're going to use this as a follow-up stun because you can see it doesn't... It's kind of very obvious to know when it's happening. It's one of those things where it comes out slowly and enemies are just going to run away from it, but if you already have an enemy stunned and then you use this afterwards, it keeps them in place, you can just do a little bit more damage, so it's good for that, which is something that she never had before, and makes her really strong, actually, that gives her a little bit of utility in fights other than just a little slow here. And then lastly, we have Stone Gaze, which is her ultimate, which I'll put these axes away from you. You can see, when I press Stone Gaze, nothing really happens to these axes, but then if they turn towards me, you can see they kind of get debuffed, and then after a while, they turn to stone. And the other big thing about that is when they are turned to stone, you actually do increase damage to these uh, heroes that have been turned to stone. So this can be very, very good for defensive capabilities. You know, if somebody uh, jumps in and initiates on you, they try to burst you down, you're very tanky, but then you also have this kind of get-out-of-jail-free card where you can use this and then TP or something like that, run away. You also get increased movement speed when you do cast this, so it allows you to run away or maybe even to run up in front of heroes so that you can turn them into stone more. It's very versatile in that way. It's very good for counter-initiations for offensive maneuvers if you want to use it for that. Just keep in mind that this hero can be pretty vulnerable, especially early if you don't have Stone Gaze available. So those are her normal abilities. Now I will show you Ags and Shard briefly. Basically, all this really does is it just makes Mystic Snake better. So Mystic Snake now turns people to stone, kind of like with your ultimate. So this just helps you because it's an extra little stun and it also helps you deal more damage. And then also if you are, have a single target ability cast on you, it also sends out a Mystic Snake, which is pretty awesome because this increases your mana. It's very, very good to go into a bunch of single target abilities if the enemy has a bunch of those. So that's why, like I said, with this facet, if you use the kind of Mystic Snake facet, you can just get a lot more mana back. It's more of a defensive ability in that way. So that's Medusa. Those are her abilities. Now let's jump into a game and see how she's played. Medusa's laning stage is really all about using Mystic Snake to secure last hits and harass the enemy and restore her mana pool. So really you want the Mystic Snake to be hitting onto a range creep and then probably an enemy hero or two depending you know where they're at. You don't really want to use it and only hit one creep or one hero because then you will kind of lose mana. Yes it can be good if you're chasing them down or getting aggressive but you usually want to try to as much as possible use your snake where you're not really using a ton of mana. Like it's restoring almost as much mana as you have to use it because obviously mana is very important for tanking and for when you're getting harassed and all that kind of stuff which is also why this hero usually starts out with a wand maybe buy some mangoes or other mana regen items early because mana is super super important to this hero but you're not going to be buying anything like tangos or salves which is also a little bit of a benefit because you don't have to waste money on those kinds of things so it's one of those where her landing stage does operate a little bit differently than some other heroes with that regen and with the way you want to play the hero because it's about harassing but also tanking at the same time in this kind of dual sense with this one ability using her snake then from there, transitioning out of the laning stage, you're going to do the same thing that a lot of these other farm-heavy carries do. You're just going to push out the wave, 
go to the jungle, maybe farm stacks, farm ancients. That's what you're going to be doing as soon as possible because this hero farms extremely quickly. And because you don't really have to buy very many small items and you just go straight into Manta, straight into big items, if you can get that two, three item timing pretty early, you're going to be an unstoppable beast. So for the most part, you don't really want to participate with your team for the first 15, 20 minutes because yes, you might have a root. Yes, you might have a little bit of a stun kind of thing in your ultimate, but that doesn't really matter because you're kind of slow. You really don't want to get out of your farming pattern too much. Yeah, sure, if you're right there, you can participate, but you want to get those early timings very quickly because you can just literally end the game if your team plays around you if you hit those early timings correctly. And for the most part, you're going to be using your ultimate to just get out of jail free if you ever do get caught out or initiated on you can kind of just use it run away a little bit tp out and it's very very hard to gank you so you're securing your farm in that way as well and then it's not till later on in the game once you do hit those timings that you do want to start participating with your team so then in fights, what do you actually want to do with this hero? Well, you want to hit those few items and you want to be so tanky that you're hard to bring down and then you kind of function as this frontline tanking sieging tower kind of hero like a bristleback almost or something like that where you just sit in front and you just say i dare you to go on me and then you have your allies just kind of sitting behind you sitting around you and then just either waiting to cast spells or just poking from afar all that kind of stuff and you don't really want fights to be happening away from you you don't want your teammates to get kind of caught out because it's very hard for you to catch up to those areas yes you have some move speed when you cast your ult but that's usually going to be saved for some kind of counter initiation once the fight has already started so it's not like you're going to use your ult to like run at after the fight run after your teammates it's it's not really how it works. So for the most part, you're going to want to try to get Aegis, sit in the front, hit the towers, hit the base, and just dare the enemy to deal with you while your teammates just sit there safely behind you. And then knowing that if the enemy does try to kill your teammates, you're right there, you're just right-clicking away, and they can't deal with you, and hopefully you'll just do enough damage to just kill them outright. And that's kind of what you're going to be ideally doing in an ideal Dusa game. Now, if you are losing, you still want to get your farm up, but then you're very, very good at defending. You want to defend towers and kind of just be objective-based, not just like taking all out random fights around the map. It's like Roche, towers, pushing or defending. That's really what you want to be focused on. If you're not doing that, you're farming. That's honestly how Medusa plays in 90% of cases in 90% of games. And then finally, this hero's really good late too. Like you don't have to be too scared if you hit those timings and you're losing or you don't get that push done correctly or maybe if you die once or twice, that's not great, but you are very good late. You can get a Divine Raper, you can get a bunch of items, you can get your Ags, you can get your Shard, you can kind of do a ton of things to make yourself extremely, extremely powerful later on in the game because honestly, if they don't have some kind of mana burn, you're just gonna keep getting tankier. You're just going to keep doing more damage into the uh, end of the game. And then if you get like five items plus a rapier that's going to be very very hard for the enemy to deal with um, even if you are in kind of a losing position if you can just get there if you can just stall out the game you're going to be hard to deal with late even if it's not the ideal like i talked about before so that's medusa and that is my guide everyone i hope you liked the video and found it helpful don't forget to like comment and subscribe and as always guys thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video